I, don't, I didn't like the video of um, the woman talking you through the free fall experiment. So I'm actually just going to make my own. This is the free fall apparatus. This is the timer. It's attached to this electronic release system. It's got a magnet inside it. When I press start on here, um, when I press the green button for start, it releases the ball and starts the timer at the same time. And then there's a pad at the bottom that you can't see very well, but there's a, a pad here that will stop the timer. Um, and so, and up the side is the scale so I can measure how far I'm dropping the ball. I have here myself a results table that I'd like you to make a copy of. So pause the video right now and make a copy of this. It says on it S for displacement slash in meters, T1 in seconds, T2 in seconds, T3 in seconds, and then you're going to have on the end um, T average in seconds. This is your raw data table. You're then going to process that and you're going to do uh, 2s against t average squared in seconds squared in meters and you're going to um, that's going to be your data, so 0, uh, 0 0.8, um, 0 0.6 twice would be 1.2, and then whatever your t is, squared, and that will allow you to plot a graph of 2s against t squared, which should give you a straight line where the gradient, rise over run, where the gradient would be gravity because g equals 2s over t squared, yeah? t is, um, sorry, g is 2s over t squared, therefore, if you plot a graph of 2s against t squared, the gradient, the rise over the run, would give you gravity. So that's going to be your write-up. Um, that's for you to do, so I'll just hold that there if you want to pause it so you can make some notes. Um, but this is just going to be me doing the results. I'm not even going to calculate T average for you. You can do that. If you have space, you can just put time up the top, time in seconds, then do one, two, three, average. I didn't have space on my little board. So you'll, you'll see the times. And so for the first one, it's set to 0 0.4 meters. I'm just going to do that three times. So I press start and you'll see the ball drop. I'll try and do it so you can see it, the first one. So I'm going to press start in three, two, one. And you can see that the time on there is 0 0.2885. 0 0.2885. Uh, so then I press reset. Put the ball back. And do it again. Zero point two eight eight seven. For those of you in class that have done the experiment yourselves, you'll notice that my data, zero point two eight eight five and zero point two eight eight seven, is much closer together than anything you would get. Hence why we use this equipment to reset. Go zero zero point two eight eight five zero point two eight eight five. So now we have the three readings for zero point four zero point two eight eight five zero point two eight eight seven zero point two eight eight five. Right, I'm just going to kind of motor through the other ones. I'm going to move the plate up to 60. I'm actually, I'm actually putting it not at 60, I'm putting it at 61.5. It's very hard to see on the video, but that's because the base plate is 1.5 centimetres thick. 
so it's not at zero annoyingly. I don't know why they design a system like that. Just move the move the scale up. But anyway, life goes on. Um, da -da -da -da, reset it. Yep. Yeah. Put the ball bearing in. Yep. Yeah. Press start. So our first time for 60 centimetres is 0 0.3532. Um, 0 0.3532. Reset, or bearing. Next reading. 0 0.35, 0 0.3529, reset, next reading, third reading, 0 0.3529, so there we have it, 0 0.3532, 0 0.3529, 0 0.3529. Reset. We're next time, 80, 81.5 to account for that. Mess up at the bottom. All bearing in. First time, 0 0.4073. 0 0.4073. Reset, ball bearing back. Go. 0 0.4073. Reset, ball bearing. Drop. 0 0.4069. Yeah, so here's our three readings for this one. 0 0.4073, 0 0.4073, 0 0.4069. Those are our three readings. So then last one's going to be one meter. Ideally we'd have more different measurements, but um, life's too short. I've just realized I think I can actually elevate, oh no I can't. Behind again. Behind the piece of paper. Okay. So one meter, here we go. First reading, 0 0.4553, 0 0.4553, reset, ball bearing, 0 0.4552. Zero point four five five two. Reset. And last one was the same. Zero point four five five two. There we go. So those last ones, zero point. 4553, 0 0.4552, 0 0.4552. So that is your results table. You can and you can modify that into 2s and t squared. You can plot a graph of 2s on the y-axis, t squared on the x-axis. You can get a straight line of best fit where the gradient is gravity, and you have yourselves a result. The one thing you need to remember to include is um, error bars and uncertainty so you can find your uncertainty in time time's probably way too small to worry about i think your uncertainty in s 
is the only one you'd plot on the graph, um, which is plus minus, well, I suppose technically this should be four zero meters, shouldn't it? So these have an uncertainty of plus minus 0 0.005. That out. So the the distances are plus minus zero point zero zero five, yeah, for s. But then you you multiply s by two, so your um, error becomes twice as big. So that's what you're you're going to be plotting on your graph. 0 0.01 as the error bars. That's still quite small, so it's a pretty good experiment really in terms of error. Almost too good. Anyway, I'm going to stop.